There's a, there's a couple of different challenges. I think number one is, is comparison. I think anything for, for a retail or an e-commerce business now, comparing data and using data to compare and contrast versus last year is going to be almost impossible. Right? So it's using a data set to give themselves a comparable metric and where do they then aim for coming into next year? I think nobody really knows what to look for and what to expect. So hello and welcome to this Checkout Scout tent. And today we're joined by Zach Hemant Lowe from Enmarsis, the customer engagement platform. Hello there, Zach. Hi, Martin. Good to, uh, good to catch up. So can we start off this quick little uh, interchange with uh, for you to tell us a little bit about yourself, where you work, what you do and how you got there? I'm the, the regional sales director for Enmarsis. I oversee the UK, the Nordics and the Benelux. Um, I've been here for five years now. Um, but if you to think about where I've come from the last eight, nine years, I've sat this side of the table or virtual screen, um, helping brands and, and consumer led retailers to leverage consumer data in order to, to sell more to their customers and to create a better customer experience. I've always sat in the, the marketing technology world, if you like. Um, Amasis is, as you quite rightly pointed out, it's a, a customer engagement platform. Um, but if I was to boil that down, it is, uh, it is a centralized data source that would allow a retailer to consolidate all of their data from multiple different sources, aka stores, aka online, and then market to those customers across um, any of the channels that they typically see fit. So email being the predominant one, obviously web, offline, WhatsApp, SMS, and so on and so forth. So really a, a marketing automation platform is probably another way of talking about it, but I'd, I'd be shocked at saying that these days. Excellent. Well, we want to explore marketing automation a little bit in this session. So as we're in this interesting phase, kind of moving towards coming out of lockdown and the next range of uh, customer and consumer habit changes that may happen, what do you see as the main challenges for your side of the industry? I think there's a there's a couple of different challenges i think number one is is comparison i think anything for a, for a retail or an e-commerce business now comparing data and using data to compare and contrast versus last year is going to be almost impossible right so it's using a data set to give themselves a comparable metric and where do they then aim for coming into next year i think nobody really knows what to look for and what to expect so there's definitely some challenges there um, I also think now as, as we come out of the back of this, most of the e-commerce businesses that I work with have seen a spike in customer data, but everyone will kind of go back to the stores, right? Now that's going to give a twofold problem. It's going to mean that customers just get to decide what they see and decide what they buy and have that experience, which is, which is good. But it means for the e-commerce teams, it means that their customer data will decrease. It means that Things like customer lifetime value will start changing and it will really mean that they need to start thinking a lot more about relevance. They need to start thinking a lot more about how they keep customers engaged because there's going to be a lot of challenge between the online and the offline, I think, is, is probably some of the areas that I'm thinking about now and certainly our customers are thinking about as a, as a future perspective. It's interesting that you um, note or expect a, a big move back in store because I suppose there are some views that say that online shopping habits will will continue as they are, or there'll be a, a, a sort of short term adjustment. But yes, it's hard to it's hard to say. But as as you say, we whatever went before, we don't quite know what's going to happen next. But given some of those challenges you've outlined, what do the what do the solutions look like? What does good look like generally to match, for example, online and in-store data capture? I think number one is 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 a unification of data to give you and I say you, but I really mean the customers, uh, a truly omni-channel experience. I think the best stores, the best retailers, the best experiences that we can give to customers are when we know them and we treat them as a customer no matter who, how, and where they engage with you. And that's something which I think is, is definitely um, is, is on the forefront of a lot of retailers at the moment. They're looking at how do we connect those data sets, especially when it comes to the in-store experience. I think the other thing that is, is going to ensure that, that businesses stay relevant is, is really through customer intelligence, right? Knowing their customers, being able to understand that, okay, Martin has been buying his skincare for the last X amount of, of months and he's stopped buying that now. Do we need to track him into store? Is there a reason why he hasn't? Should we be 
taking that data and more importantly, how do we then continue to understand Martin's movements, whether that be online or in store and personalize the journeys that he that he receives. And I think that's going to be really where where good looks like it's consolidating data, but more importantly, good is going to solely focus around customer experience. And that is always the way that we we kind of think about it. And, and I personally um, completely agree with that. Can you name then a few specific vendors or providers or software um, providers that you think uh, are worth mentioning as part of this, the solutions going forward? Yeah, I think um, there's, a, there's, well, there, there's obviously a host of, of fantastic software providers out there at the minute. I think one of the challenges, and I'm sure a challenge that for anyone that's watching this will be concerned around some of the, the cookie um, the, the loss of, of cookie information and the lack of third party cookie information. And there's a, a vendor, that, a partner of ours that we work with called Personify XP and um, that solely work with anonymous data. So their focus is on when customers stop giving you information and you only know them as cookie ID XYZ49, it's still being able to create personalized experiences off of the back of that, right? It's about tailoring and creating groups of of information so that you can still drive people towards the end result as opposed to just not knowing them. So we just hope that something happens. I think that's a really, really cool piece of tech that those guys are working on. Another another brand, uh, sorry, another another technology that, that I know about is another one called Program AI. Um, a guy called Dean, who used to use XASOS, actually um, started that business a couple of years back. And that is, again, it's, it's slightly of the same vein, but more around um, your third party advertisement. So looking at your, your TikToks, your Snapchats, your Facebooks, your, your outbound social um, medias and using the data that you have available. So from a first party data perspective, to identify, recognize and engage with customer groups. But he's layering in some really clever, predictive um, artificial intelligence algorithms. The leverage um, within AI that, that they're doing, which is really clever, right? It's looking at predictive modeling and it's trying to work with businesses to move away from metrics that are pretty old, in my opinion, like return on ad spend, um, to really look at things like profitability, to really look at things like lifetime value, because that's really where businesses are now moving towards, which is that profitability and, and total cost of ownership, really, is the, the piece that we're looking at. So definitely two bits of tech that I'd I'll chat to any of my my partners about. Moving towards the end of our little session now, we, we've, we've finished with a few more kind of quick fire lighter questions. Um, what would be your, perhaps besides the ones you mentioned, but what would be your tip for a sort of B2B e-commerce success story in 2021? Who should we keep our eyes on? I don't think that there's no, there's no one in particular that I would shout out, but there is there is a category that I think is, is going to revolutionize the way that we work. And it, it kind of falls back to everything that we were talking about with customer experience, but I think payments are going to have to change. I think payments need to adapt. And I think looking at um, one-click payments, looking at authority, that sort of piece there is, is definitely there for the taking. And you look at the integration of shop pay for anyone that hasn't used it, I'm sure most people have now come across it. Like it's, it's, it's a game changer in terms of the way people can pay. And I think that would be the area that I think looking into the rest of this year and next year is going to change and is really going to start to give people that, 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 that frictionless um, feel when they're, they're shopping. If you could start your own uh, e-commerce business tomorrow with uh, money, um, product and uh, technology, no object, they're all in place. What would be your idea for a new business, Zach? I think there'd be a great opportunity to have a, some form of, of AI-led e-commerce business that could give people haircuts remotely during lockdown. Um, I'd also love, I don't know what, but I'd love a business that enabled me to go skiing. That'd be great. I think I'd find something that could do that there. But if I was to put my money in a basket that I thought would would earn me, well, say earn me, but, but get, um, become a really valuable business, I think it's skincare, but in a sustainable way, I think there's some of our biggest clients at the minute and a lot of where they're moving towards is around sustainability. It's around the ingredients that are going in there and money was no object. I think I'd, I'd probably go into that because I think it's, it's, it's a market that's increasing. And final question, and it, it may be a hairdresser, it may be something else, but um, 
when lockdown does end and uh, retail and bricks and mortar premises open up again, where will you be heading first? Oh, hairdresser, obviously. Uh, I think I think that 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 would have been the case. But do you know what? I, it's it's a difficult one. I think there, there's there has been so much accessibility online that there's nowhere that I particularly miss outside of hairdressers and bars and restaurants. I think. One place I, I enjoyed for the experience is, is John Lewis. Like I think that they've done an incredible job of, of educating staff and giving you the availability to look and to feel and to touch. I think that's probably um, quite a pick somewhere. I, I guess you say enjoy or look forward to going back to. I think I'd, I'd, it would be a nice experience to go back to. I don't think I'd be disappointed in going back to a John Lewis. So, Zach, Heaven Lowe, thanks very much for joining us at the Checkout Scout tent. See you soon. See you later. Thank you.